I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to wel welcome everybody to the March 12th meeting of the Rhinebeck Village Board. First item on the agenda is our county legislator, Joel Tyner. Joel? So the first thing is I wanted to invite everybody watching, everybody in the room. I'm doing another one of my monthly forums for the public on Tuesday, March 26th at 5.30 p.m., just across the way at Rhinebeck Town Hall. You're all invited. Tuesday, March 26th, 5.30, Rhinebeck Town Hall, just to hear input, ask me questions, whatever. That's number one. Number two is uh, only once every 10 years does the solid waste management plan for Dutchess County come around. And so the public comment is only being accepted on that uh, for another day or two. Uh, and you can pretty easily find that on the county website if you go to the county planning department website, if you go to the county division of solid waste. And uh, unfortunately, incineration is being promoted still too much and uh, incineration is being prolonged. And uh, I've done a lot of research on this over the last four or five years. Garbage isn't garbage if you source separate it. It goes into the clean dozen, the woods, the metals, the glass, the polymers, the plastics, plant debris, food waste, et cetera. We, we're sitting on about $20 million worth of stuff, materials that we could be making money off of instead of losing a lot of money and poisoning our air with incineration. Um, so if you go to uh, uh, noburn.org, no-burn.org, uh, there's a lot of information there. If you go to duchessdemocracy.blogspot.com, but there's only about 48 hours left to make a comment on the solid waste management plan for the county. You can email solidwastemgmt at duchessny.gov. Um, I was one of the few people questioning over the last week uh, the expenditure of a million dollars on the Fishkill Baseball Stadium. Um, Poughkeepsie Journal did a speak up poll question on Thursday, Friday they printed the results. Uh, it was something like 82 people said yes, go spend the uh, million dollars, and about 435 people said no. By, so by a five to one ratio, people who participated in the poll said we don't want to spend a million dollars. So myself and a few other individuals uh, sort of took hard positions on that. The Poughkeepsie Journal reported that seven years ago, the county comptroller did an audit that the first 12 years of stadium life, uh, the, 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 the receipts received were insufficient to pay interest on the construction debt. And then when the reporter asked county officials to say, you know, what years the stadium was profitable, uh, historical analysis, that would be very time consuming. So I found that troubling. I was not able to support uh, the mill because everything's been decimated. There's no money for anything. There's no YMCA, no YWCA, no Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Cornell Cooperative Extension has been decimated. The, the County Youth Bureau Project Return Program and property taxes and sales taxes are still too high. So that troubled me along with another $900,000 for the enterprise content management system. Um, I found that uh, folks uh, in Rhinebeck and Clinton are, are fairly fiscal conservative, so that troubled me to spend about $2 million on those two things last night. Um, I would also let you know that uh, if you missed the Poughkeepsie Journal editorial from a couple days ago, this is Sunshine Week, and uh, it's all about public access to government information and trying to get away from closed door government. For six or seven weeks now, I've been trying to get information about the records going on with the purchasing policies with the Dutch County Department of Public Works. Uh, I invite you to call me on that at 876-2488 or 453-2105 uh, because I have not been getting the records that I've asked for about you know where you know exactly what companies are item for the coal patch, the gravel, the blacktop, et cetera. Um, there's also only about a week or so left to comment on the Central Hudson Fortis deal. Uh, County Comptroller Jim Coughlin, who lives in Rhinebeck, pointed out that we taxpayers spent about $791,000 last year on Central Hudson just to heat and light the county buildings. Uh, Kevin Cahill, the Assemblyman for Rhinebeck, has pointed out that in other deals, we, we should be having an $85 million customer and community, community benefits, not just $50 million in customer and community benefits. Uh, it's 1-800-335-2120. That's the number for the uh, Secret for the for the New York State Public Service Commission, or you can email secretary at dps.ny.gov. Also, NAFTA comes into effect now. We're dealing with a Canadian company. Uh, as Kay Hills pointed out, we've had record Central Hudson rate increases over the last five years. I know it's a big impact on the Dutchess County budget and taxpayers. I believe you folks here in the Village of Rhinebeck government 
have to pay Central Hudson. Uh, you know, I, I think that whatever we can do to hold things down. Right now, they're only under the current terms of the deal. They're only talking about no rate hikes for another year and keeping jobs for another two years. And the Poughkeepsie Journal says that's not good enough. Kevin Kale says that's not good enough. I don't think that's good enough either. I actually got Ben Trout, county legislator for Red Hook Tools, to sign on to a letter with me on that. So uh, again, I'm at 876-2488 on that, and call uh, the Department, uh, the uh, New York State Public Service Commission on that. Um, last but not least, uh, there's been all this stuff in the papers about the, uh, the New York Safe Act. Um, the way that it went down in Albany was not good. You know, the, the vote was last night in the county legislature. Uh, it was atrocious. But the man who sat over there, Terry Gibson, I think he's been on the right track over the last uh, month or two. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Terry has been pointing out in the state Senate, you know, the vampire voting bill, things shouldn't be rushed through like that. Uh, you know, between 9 p.m. and 9 a.m., there shouldn't be deliberations on that. I would just urge people, I'm not going to, you know, this is the village of Rhinebeck board meeting, so I'm not going to take much more of your time. I'll just say one thing. I didn't really know exactly what was in the New York Safe Act. Uh, until I started doing some research, there's a, there's a lot of good things in it. And if you want me to stand here and talk to you more about five or ten minutes, I will. But uh, I think you have better things to do. I have to hustle over to the Clinton Town, uh, to the Clinton Town uh, board meeting. Um, if you go to nyagv.org or bradycampaign.org or duchessdemocracy.blogspot.com, you can see why I voted the way I did. And, and again, the way that it went through, just really atrocious, but to me you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I also experienced a gun tragedy in my own family 30 years ago, so uh, guns kill. People, I'm, I'm all about the Second Amendment. You should be able to hunt, trap, fish, defend yourself. I don't think you need uh, AR-15 or an AK-47 to do that. But I'm at 876-2488, and, and if you agree or disagree, whatever, come raise hell with me. Tuesday, March 26, 5.30 p.m., Rhinebeck Town Hall. Thank you for your patience, guys. I gotta run to the Clinton Town Board meeting. Thanks, Joel. Yep. Okay, next item on the agenda is a continuation of the public hearing that was held over from last month. Uh, it's regarding an amendment to the Village Code Section 10915, All Night Parking, also known as the Snow Ordinance. Uh, and the uh, suggested change was from 12.01 a.m. until, it's, it is at 12.01 a.m. till 6 a.m. and the change was from 12.01 a.m. until 8 a.m. So at this point, I need a motion to reopen the public hearing, please. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So voted. Pete? Yep. Uh, I don't want to take this opportunity just to go over a few things. Um, on behalf of the police department and working with the highway department, um, I had made this request to the village, the village board, to make a change to the ordinance. Um, after speaking with the Chamber of Commerce, Colin Crookshank, and, and many members in the village and businesses and the community members, um, I've come to the realization that I did a little research and all throughout Dutchess County I researched all the villages uh, in Dutchess County and I ran through some of them. Um, just let me give you some what they have for times. Uh, Village of Red Oaks 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Town of Red Oaks 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Village of Tilly's is 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, City of Kingston has no parking 24 hours after a snow emergency is declared. Village of Millbrook is 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Town of Fishkill is 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. Village of Fishkill, 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. City of Beacon is 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Village of Wappingers Falls is 12 a.m. to 7 a.m. And the Village of Millerton is 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, Town of Pleasant Valley has no parking for, on their local streets from November 1st to April 15th. Um, so basically what I'm, I'm going to say here is tonight, I'm looking for the Village Board to amend the amendment. I'm going to ask that we just leave the law the way it is, 109.15, from November 15th um, to March 30th. Leave it from uh, midnight to 6 a.m. That's, that's what I have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Comments from the public? Jack? I would, uh, John Verricchio, I would just quickly say that I support what you just heard, uh, leave the ordinance the way it is, because it would impact businesses, at least the Catholic Church, I don't know about other denominations, but I don't see the need to change it. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jack. Anybody else? Bill? Um, William again, Village of Red Hook, I uh, support... Village of Rhinebeck. I mean... It's, it's later. Did you move? <laughs> no, I haven't. Not yet. No, I'm still here. Forty years. I'm still here. No, I uh, I, I support uh, Sergeant Dunn's uh, motion proposal. 
Uh, there's a reason why it's 6 a.m. in all those villages. They have churches in those villages, and you have Sunday morning mass or services uh, in most of those villages. Uh, and there's a reason, because some of them are at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., and it would impact the parking for the people that are attending church services. That's our main interest. Thank you. I would uh, support, uh, excuse me, Louis Ruge. Um, I'd like to support the officer's uh, change in that uh, suggestion. Uh, I didn't make the first public hearing, and I'm not aware of it. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, we've, over the times, and, you know, my father started out in a little wine store down across from the Beekman Arms, and uh, when he moved up where we are now, they told him that he was way out of town and shouldn't go. Well, he should have gone further. <laughs> Anyhow, we do open at 6, and, uh, you know, we've been restricted to the area that we are, and we've tried to live within it. We've tried to do the right things for the village. Um, we lease the lot behind the church, and we can use it when they're not. But we still have to use the street. And at 6 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock, we're moving things around so that we can get to work and so that maybe our employees have to park there or they park in the thing. So it would really be a hardship for us uh, in that respect. And I do respect the fact that, you know, it's a problem with plowing and so forth, but we try to help out all we can. And when there's a snowstorm, we, we have the, the vehicles off the street and we, we try to help out. So, but this man has uh, helped me a lot here. If you would go along with the suggestion, <laughs> but I thank you. Okay, thanks, Lewis. Anybody else? If there's no further comments from the public, then I would uh, ask for a motion to close the public hearing. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Comments from the board? Grant, do you have anything to say? No. I was really prepared to, you know, vote against the, the change anyway, so. Good. Okay. No, I want to keep it the same way it is. Fine. I want to keep it the same. You know, I had had some discussions with Pete, and I said my concerns, of course, were for, for the business community. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of factors that play into it. You have establishments such as Pete's and Bread Alone and the Bagel Shop that open early in the morning. Uh, businesses such as Ruggie's. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an early riser, and I'm out early, and I see the vehicles that are on the streets, and I see activity at Lewis's. I mean, those guys are there at 530 in the morning getting the garage fired up and moving vehicles around. Uh, I'm at the bagel shop a lot of mornings when they open, and their employees are already there. I've been there for a half an hour or so getting ready. Pete's, those people are in there at 5 or 5.30 in the morning. So, uh, you know, I don't feel we have a major problem in the village. Uh, luckily, we've had a couple of fairly mild winters here, and we haven't had a lot of snow activity. Uh, on years when there's a lot of snowstorms, it can be a headache, but, you know, it's something that we have to manage and something that we have to deal with. So, uh, uh, you know, my intent was to recommend that we stick with the 12 a.m. Uh, until 6 a.m. So with that said, uh, we're, we're done, right? We don't have to do anything. We don't take action on it. So. Right. right. Okay. Thank you, everybody that came and commented. Next item on the agenda, department reports. Wastewater, Brant. You can all stay the rest of the meeting. Highway <laughs> <laughs> department reports coming up too. What? No, I'm just kidding. We had three million uh, gallons of wastewater treated for February, uh, 88,400 gallons of sludge process, uh, 13,535 pounds of sludge process to 23.8 cubic yards of sludge process. Uh, the sludge press uh, broke, but we repaired it to the tune of about $733. Uh, the reason why I point that out is because uh, it's looking more and more prudent that we are embarking on replacing it. Um, we're keeping it going. Uh, to that end, we just got the, uh, the shop drawings approved and the, uh, the new sludge press has been ordered. Um, so we're going to try to push that because that's the long lead time item. Um, we had the uh, schedule of values approved from Standard Construction Corp, which is basically uh, 
all the benchmarks that they're going to go through and have a value attached to them. So uh, aside from that, let's see what else do I have. There's, I think that's about it. Okay. Thanks, Brent. You're welcome. Water Department. Heinz? Uh, we treated about uh, 9,322,000 gallons uh, this, uh, this month. Uh, Five million, so, you mean, right? Come again? Nine million, you mean. Nine right? million. I said 9,000. I meant nine million. I'm sorry. Uh, we replaced about 80 of these large bol uh, uh, bolts that hold some of the, the uh, uh, pumping system together. Uh, right at the place where the highest pressure occurs. Uh, these uh, bolts are about one inch in diameter, and uh, we, they were all corroded. We had to take them all out and uh, get ready for our painting project that is going to hopefully uh, start pretty soon. Uh, as far as the water distribution system is concerned, uh, the uh, the South Parsonage main trunk line is uh, essentially completed, but needed a finish. We need to still finish the uh, blacked up concrete and then and, uh, and the uh, the work uh, around the bridge, uh, you know, uh, uh, recreating it and so on. I received a number of complaints on that, and uh, I had just asked uh, Nancy Clark to get a hold with Bucky uh, uh, Coons to uh, to get a date when we are going to have the uh, that work completed. It should be very soon. It's it's warm enough to do the work now. That's upon when the black pump. Yeah, top black top is open, right? Now. But it, it probably by the in the meantime, yeah. we just have to keep filling the holes. Yeah, and and we do, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, they last about two days. You mm -hmm. know, it gets gets blown out again. We, we, we did it Monday. You did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you did. Um, we had uh, quite a water main break yesterday, and uh, on uh, Violet Place, a uh, six-inch uh, water main broke. And uh, we had a cut section out, about uh, three feet of it. And uh, in the process of shutting off the the the, uh, the, the water to the to the line, we also broke broke off two of the uh, the, the valves that connected the uh, uh, that, that shut off the water to to that system. Uh, both of them uh, in the, uh, the North Park region. One of them in North Park and uh, Violet uh, Place, and the other one North Park and South. South Parsonage Street, and that particular area is also where we wanted to replace the fire hydrant. So uh, we're going to look into uh, to do all of this at the same time because you dig a hole, you know, you may as well do the other one. The bad part is that there is a, uh, two utility poles right within about three feet of it. So we, we need to look at this. I just uh, gave you, uh, I made some pictures of that, and uh, and I want to just show them to you. Uh, this is this is the break, and the break uh, always seems to be occurring on the underside of the bridge. With other words, there is a lot of tension there, probably something bearing down, and and bends. And the upper part is in compression, the other one, the bottom is in tension, and uh, this is what the break looks like. And when we took the uh, the pipe out, you may want to pass this on here. Uh, this does not look very pretty. This that's a six-inch pipe that uh, morphed into a four-inch pipe. Uh, at the time, and uh, there's about one inch of growth on there, and that's a, a, a reason why I show you all that because we, we seem to see that a lot. Um, other items that I worked on is uh, I worked uh, reworked the uh, the village emergency water uh, the water plant uh, emergency response plan, and. Uh, uh, I'm just about done with it, but uh, uh, Pat was uh, Pat Coon at this was working on that, and I think she's going to be immobilized for for uh, a while. And uh, I'm wondering if uh, we can get a couple of hours of comp time and Elisa to finish that. It is mostly formatting and so on, and I'm I want to put it in the PDF form, so uh, we may want to put this on our website. Uh, prior to that, I'm, I want to give you uh, a copy of that when it's done, and also to you to take a look look at that. Uh, if I that would, is something you want to do, I would just bef before it's put on the website, I would just check and make sure that there's some things in there that possibly need to remain confidential. Yes, and I took so. some of them out because of that. But I'd like before we do that, I, want, I just is going to distribute a, uh, a copy of that, and you can all look through that, and, and also also you. Um, I printed out your draft by accident. I thought it was about three pages long. It no, that's thirty pages. That's, that's wow. quite that's quite a long piece of property. It's quite a document. It's quite a document. Yeah. 
Um, secondly, uh, I'm in the process of, uh, of doing some uh, capital maintenance and uh, cap capital improvement projects. Uh, the first one that is going to come about is uh, painting the uh, basement of the water plant. And that is going to come in three flavors. Uh, the first one is to paint all the existing pipes. Uh, the second part of it, and that's going to be a bit that way, is the, the surrounding, the inside the walls only, not the floor and not, not the ceilings. And the third one is we have a low lift station, which is uh, uh, aside from the, from the main water plant, close to the Hudson River. And there, uh, that was actually built not long ago, like, like eight or ten years ago. However, there are some section of that that is a fairly old pipe, and, and particularly on the, uh, uh, the, the fasteners, the bolts and the nuts, they, they start to corrode. And uh, so I wanted to have that looked at and, and, and bit also. We may not do that, but I wanted, you know, while, while we have the painters there, I want, want them to look at. Uh, I had, uh, I've been continuing uh, interviewing a number of vendors of that, mainly because I did not know the scope and, and, the, and, and the cost of this thing. We had uh, that bit once in 1099 or 2000 in that time frame, and the cost at that time was $24,000 to paint, paint the pipes, and clean, well, clean the pipes and, and paint them. And uh, my sense is that this course has gone up probably two or threefold at, at this point. So uh, I had asked uh, Nancy uh, Clark, our engineer, to, uh, and I had talked to you that before, to give me an estimate of her cost to send out bid packages since this is over, probably going to run over $50,000. I think we have to go for a public bidding process and I, I, you know, I cannot do that by myself. I think I need, I need some help on that. And she has come back to me with a cost of uh, $12,400 to put that uh, bidding uh, package together. And she has detailed what the cost is. And uh, it is not just you know, putting the, uh, the, the package together, but it's also to control the quality of the, uh, uh, of, of the paint job or, or the, the coating of the, of the parts and so on. And uh, I'm here uh, tonight to, uh, to, to get approval to, to do that. Uh, I have a meeting set up for the 19th uh, site visit uh, with, with Nancy and Tom and uh, Jim said he is going to come to look at exactly what, uh, what we want to do. Uh, I need to do that now because I have a, uh, we have a problem with, with the weather uh, and the water gets too cold as it is now uh, or in the, in, the, in the fall or the, in the late fall or early winter. Uh, the, the pipes uh, condensate, there's condensation on the pipes, and uh, they, they drip, so we have to keep it dry in order to, to clean it up and, and paint and so on. So uh, th this work needs to start not later than the early part of June, and has to be finished by uh, September time frame. Uh, so I, I'd like to get uh, your, your approval here to, uh, to, to get into a contract with uh, Earthman Anthony, uh, to uh, start uh, going for a public bidding on, on this uh, on this project. Uh, I'm not prepared to take any action yet because I haven't had a chance to read the document yes, in its entirety. Yes, I just, I just got it. Certainly, you know, I got it today, certainly, but I can be prepared by tomorrow night. Oh, okay. We have a meeting tomorrow night. Yeah, or, or, Thursday, or, or, night. or Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night. Yeah, we don't have yeah. to do it tomorrow. Yep. Okay. And uh, I think I have a, I thought it was a closed envelope, but I got a document here. So we can. Well, I have the document. I just oh. haven't had a chance to oh, read it. Okay. It's no, no, but I, I, I think. Did you get the document? Did yeah, I got you, one. Too. You got one too. Okay. So okay, so that is part. That is that. Um, okay. I'm also working on a, a variable frequency drives for high service pumps, and the reason we do that is twofold. Number one, we have a terrible corrosion and and leakage going on on, on the control valves that uh, shut the. Uh, uh, access to the pump on and off. And uh, we also have uh, issues with the amount of electricity that we're using to do that. I had uh, extensive conversations with uh, Central Hudson to find out exactly how they go about uh, meet, uh, uh, charging us for, uh, for the power. And of course, uh, I had mentioned that before, there's two ways they charge us. Number one, they charge us for 
uh, the size of the pipe, I mean, the electricity, uh, you know, the voltage and so on, and, and the amount of current that is sent to us. And the other one, which they don't really control, and just do a pass-through, is the actual power consumed the volt amperage uh, pairs that we're consuming. It turns out, uh, in, in the distribution network, what uh, Central Hudson does is they, uh, they uh, check the, uh, the current flow and the voltage, the current flow essentially every 15 minutes and of the day. And they take the high value of that uh, uh, to determine you know, what they're going to charge us for the, uh, for the distribution. Uh, so one of the reasons I, I want to do this or, or looking at, at wanting to do this is to reduce the amount of initial surge that is in, in the line when, uh, when you first turn the motor on. Uh, these are 100 horsepower motor, it runs at 440 or 450 volts, and the initial surge to turn that thing on is like 1100 amps, which is a lot, a lot of power, okay? And we can substantially uh, reduce this now. So we get hit number one from a distribution point of view because of the high amperage use, and then also uh, in, in power consumption part of it uh, for, for the high amperage use. And uh, so, as far as the generation of the power is concerned, there are different companies who charge different prices for a kilowatt hour. Uh, I know what Central Hudson's numbers are. I have uh, you know two or three years of data on that, on monthly data. Uh, I have uh, data for a particular month of some of the other, Agway is one of them, uh, other companies that sell uh, power. And uh, just by having one cent a kilowatt hour less, you know, we are using in, in, the, in the water plant about 40,000 kilowatt hours uh, a month. It's $400. Okay, and I just happened to sign your vouchers this morning, <laughs> and you, you actually use more uh, power than we use in the water plant. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you use close to, you know, we use typically about five, five and a half thousand. And they say water doesn't run uphill. Well, we're trying to push it, you know. <laughs> so, so, so I'm Earth sure. Earth uphill too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's going to be some, yeah. there's going to be some savings. This is a monthly bill I'm talking about, and I think yours is monthly also. So I'm sure there's savings all around here. So I want to, uh, uh, I want to continue working on that. I started the discussion with a, uh, with a number of uh, uh, people who do this kind of regular frequency drives, and I haven't come up with a, a common denominator yet. Uh, so I, I must still have a number of people to go through. I interviewed three people so far. Uh, I have one or two more to go, and uh, I'm going to keep you apprised of uh, what is going on here. Uh, next item is. Uh, I had preliminary discussions, very preliminary, like 15, 20 minutes this morning with, uh, with our village engineer and have a, a, about an hour, or an hour and a half a telephone call with her tomorrow to talk about a comprehensive plan, an engineering plan for, for the village and the uh, village of Rhinebeck. And she tells me that they actually have somebody there who a uh, graduate student who can be of assistance to us. Um, she thinks that it is important that we have a kind of an integrated plan to do that. And the integrated plan means, you know, the water distribution system, the uh, drainage and, uh, and, and road improvement. And uh, that drainage means new and existing. You know, we have areas that are not being drained at all and road improvements, and we have already done the sidewalks. I mean, we have a pretty good mapping of what is going on here. So I want to have a, uh, a discussion with her of what it takes to do that. I, I am willing, uh, assuming the board agrees with that, to, to start funding the initial part of it because I, I know that we have issues or going to have issues with our uh, water supply at some point in time, and I want to for, forestall that. Uh, one of the things in the water department we need to do is, is to really measure the, the water pressure, uh, the dynamic water, water pressure in over many areas in, in the village. We have a lot of four-inch lines there. We have a lot of six-inch lines, which we just saw here in this picture here, that, more, that get down to two-inch lines. And, uh, but in, in order to really understand what is going on in these, in these pipes outside of, you know, uh, 
just changing them. I think I, what I want to do, and I'd ask uh, Tom Wallbank to start looking for a piece of equipment that we can put on one side of a, uh, at one hydrant and then measure the, 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 the pressure drop when we open up another part, another hydrant ne nearby and so on. And I think we need to do that kind of a mapping uh, all, uh, all through, the, through the village. So I have, I'm going to have these kind of discussions with, uh, with, with Nancy and I thought maybe when I get to a point where it is useful for the board here to, uh, uh, to partake, uh, I'm going to schedule a, uh, a workshop or something like that so we can think about it. Uh, what we want to do and, and one other reason I think we need to do this is if we want to go for grant money at some point and probably soon we got to have some kind of an understanding of what we want to do so the discussion I had with, with the engineers that I want to see something that is sort of layered where we can take things out you know like on a shelf have a, take a take a uh, uh, some some kind of uh, an assessment out and then and wrap it up with with a grant application. So uh, so when when something when money becomes available somewhere, we can we can do that. Um, if you have no objections to that, I, I'd like to get into a conversation uh, with the uh, with the engineer uh, uh, shortly. Is there cost associated? Uh, there is no cost with that initial, but there will be a cost when we talk about. Uh, talk all you want. Well, okay. Well, uh, one one of the things I want to uh, say also is that we have uh, we uh, the most a lot of I mostly have in the last year done a lot of mapping of the infrastructure of the village, and we have actually for the water department a fairly a good idea uh, of where where the pipes are, where the valves are, where the hydrants are, and 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 the quality thereof. However, this is not a substitute for an engineering plan if you go out for grant writing. You know, you need to have something, something that mm -hmm. is, assumed, is, 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 is sanctioned and, and blessed by, by, by uh, an, an engineer. So, okay, I will talk to her and uh, we'll come back and, and uh, would, would you be amenable to a, to, to a workshop at some time to have her explain? Well, I think it's a little premature to talk about that yet because based on our meeting tomorrow night, too, we have to figure out what but, we're going to do. So yes, yeah. let's, that's all uh, sort of, let's that's kind all of like absorb the information okay. and then we'll decide Thank how we're going to progress. Good. Okay. Um, real quick, do you, those variable speed pumps, when did you plan on uh, doing that in? Certainly not before September. And the reason is the reason fiscal year. Uh, it's going to be in this coming fiscal year. Because yeah. then we'll see if that st helps with the water leaks. Well, mid what? If we have a consistent pressure, then oh, that, that, that we, yeah, that it's uh, going to help with the water leaks. Yeah, the, the prevent water. The, leaks. You mean the, the breakage of the pipes? Is that what yeah. you mean? Uh, the breakage of the pipes, to a large extent, is is also uh, seasonal. Yeah. Uh, because uh, you know the ground heaves and so on. Sure. And and uh, uh, yeah. No, the reason the the uh, uh, variable speed pumps uh, is not going to happen before that is because I got to get the <laughs> the pipes and and the downstairs uh, cleaned up first right. and painted. Okay. And that's going to take till probably September. Okay, uh, we're good. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not done yet. I have a, lot, a bit more to go. Uh, I'm Clock's ticking. <laughs> <laughs> I am requesting uh, uh, to start initial funding of uh, the, the various uh, projects that we discussed in, in a week or two weeks ago, capital projects. And uh, at, at a time, we, uh, we said that we would, uh, that I need, them, want to uh, put some money in, into an, a number of items. One of them is the clean paint and re of repairing of the pump house. Uh, I like. Do I need to get an, for each one of these a? Uh, I want to transfer money from my fund balance for my water. You should have a, fund balance. You should have a proposal of what you want to do for each one of the board members so that they can review it and get an understanding of exactly what you want to do. So. For example, you're going to take money from the fund balance to fund this project. This is how much it's going to cost. Yeah, well, I don't I want know to what fund this project. You know, that's what you should have. Well, I I have that, uh, uh, Jim, and that is part of our uh, of, uh, plan, our 2013-2014 plan. Okay. I had that so outlined. then that would be approved during our budget process. Uh, we did essentially approve 
the concept. We did not approve right. the transfer of the dollars. But it doesn't become effective until the budget goes into effect on June 1st. Uh, that's correct. Right. Yeah. So, so, so when we approve the budget, then everything can happen. But we, you know, we're okay. still in the development of the budget process. Okay, so now I'm a little bit in a quandary because I, uh, I want to get this paint project going. Now I have money to do that. It's still from the leftover from the uh, uh, South Passage Street. Mm -hmm. So I, I probably have to use it. Right. But if, if you're part. planning on funding the paint project in calendar year 2013-14, yeah, if that's how you're planning. I, I, I am doing that, except for the engineering, engineering uh, effort, which is twelve thousand dollars, which which becomes. And that money would soon. come is coming from where? That that would be coming from. It from could the, come from whatever is left over from the South Parsonage Street, or I would have to okay. transfer it from. Right. So the, it's money uh, that's already there. It's money that's already yeah. there. Yeah. So that's just a matter of juggling. it. Yeah. All right. But okay. if it's a, if it's a capital project that's being funded in the 2013-14 budget, budget then that done. money's not there yet. It's not there. No, I would have to transfer it. Well, you can't really transfer it because it's not funded yeah. until 2013-14. Uh, well, you could transfer it, but you can't expend it because no, I can't expend it. That's right. correct. Okay. So yeah. enough said. So, uh, uh, Heinz, yes. Uh, this is where you want to set up different lines in your yeah. in your capital. Yeah, I have already. We have already done that. We just have not put any money into it. Oh, okay. Okay. And that, as Jim said, mm -hmm. that's going to Those happen. lines aren't going to be there until June 1st. First. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, last thing is I visited the Poughkeepsie uh, uh, water treatment facility in, uh, uh, right in the back of the uh, uh, Marist College. And uh, that facility is about 20 times the size of ours. And uh, they do about 3.5 billion gallons per year and 9 million gallons per month. Uh, they do have 17 full-time employees there. Uh, they have 24-7 20, uh, uh, coverage. Uh, they have a capital plan that's about $20 million, and that is on top of uh, huge expenditures that they had already in the past. They built a new plant, which is uh, almost $20 million with, with uh, interest and so on. Uh, they are separated from the distribution plant. They have actually uh, that the plant is by itself, and then there's three distribution items. One of them is the town, one is, is the, uh, the city, and then there's a third one, which is an independent one, and I believe part of that is IBM, uh, where they get water from, from these guys. And uh, so it was interesting to see the size of the equipment there and what, what they're doing and how they deal with, with, with problems. And uh, one of the good things uh, about going there is to, to, to get the sense of who they work with, who are the, the, the people that are supporting them, and, and so on. So, so the networking, I thought, was, uh, was an interesting part. And that is the... Uh, our finished water, by the way, seems to be just a little bit better. But that is because the water, the raw water that gets into Poughkeepsie is quite a lot worse than, than what we have up here for, from their data. But anyway, so uh, that is it for me, and I'm sorry for taking so long. All right. Thank you. All right, next is fire department. Call volume for the month of February. We had 21 EMS calls in the town, 22 in the village for a total of 43. We had 11 fire calls in the town and 10 in the village for a total of 21. Uh, motor vehicle accidents, one in the town and two in the village for a total of three. So there were a total of 33 calls in the town and 34 in the village or 67 total calls for the month. So year to date, uh, the end of February, we have 74 calls in the town, 68 in the village, or 142 calls total. I have a meeting with uh, at least the chief tomorrow night, perhaps some of the other officers, and hopefully I'm gonna nail down the rest of their budget lines and be ready to discuss those with you guys on Thursday. Uh, we have a, a new member of the fire department to vote in, uh, Casey Van Voris. He's a newly elected member, and they're looking for the board to approve him as a firefighter. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve Casey Van Voris. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. That's it for fire department. Street department, Howie? Yep. Um, okay, the guys have been doing the maintenance on the trucks and the backhoes. 
repairing leaks and, and the lights. Uh, they've been doing tree trimming along the roadsides, roadsides and the streets. They've also been doing street sign repairs, <coughs> plowing and salting as needed as the, as the storms come in. And the trucks and sanders have been working trouble free, knock on wood. Uh, during the last storm, there were a lot of cars left on the streets overnight, making it hard to plow and salt. One um, thing I want to I question on that, do we know what time this was? Because I know they were out at about 8.30 at night. And if there's cars on the streets, the snow ordinance doesn't take effect till midnight, so. Right. I'll talk to Mike about that. But they also do have the ability to call the sheriffs if they uh, if there are like three o'clock in the morning. Well, what they need, what they should do, is if it's becoming a big headache, is contact me, mm -hmm. and then I can try and take some action. Okay. But to not do anything, you know, to not say anything to anybody. Yeah, it's the first time I heard about yeah. it. Really, so, during my report. Yeah. yeah. Um, they've been cold patching the potholes. Basins were cleared of ice and snow for the water runoff. And uh, Mike says that any lawn damage done during the plowing will be repaired as soon as the weather permits. That's it for the highway department. And what I'd like to say, just to say it for the camera, is that you know if somebody has a car and it is snowing, even if it's prior to midnight, it would behoove you to get your car off the street so that the plows can get through. People's cooperation would be greatly appreciated. That's it, uh, Howie. Mm -hmm. I had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Because we, we talked about this, but I keep forgetting to mention it. The owner of Superior Sanitation calls me, and he thinks that we should, because the water, the septic tank is filling up with groundwater, presumably. He suggested that we camera the waistline going into it, and he's got a camera and see if there's any crack in any of the fittings or any of the pipe going into the tank and just see if that's where the where it's coming in because he suspected that might be it and he quoted me four hundred dollars so it wouldn't you're talking at the highway garage yeah yeah it wouldn't require board action i just keep forgetting to okay to do anything about it so well at one point there was uh talk about infiltration at the lid that's that it wasn't awesome. being sealed properly and he doesn't I mean, think that's it he, he just recommended we do it just to see if that's it because we're cleaning that thing out frequently. So. Hey, this is a, a uh, superior sanitation from what? Amenia or Stanfordville? Or? Well, I think they're from Pine Plains. Pine I Plains. Think. Yeah. Let's, let's Can we get a free cleaning of the, of the tank for the, if you, if you hire them to do that? For $400. Why not? You got free beer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounded like a good idea to me. Because if it's cracked, there's groundwater getting in there somewhere. Right. He doesn't think it's a little. Jeff Decker says it's not nothing to do with the tank. They're, they're all sealed. Right. And that's sealed. what he thinks. So let's camera what it. What do you want to do? We'll can't, we'll, we're going to make a motion to do that? or No, it's, well, it's less than $500. Yeah. So I'd like to do it then. Who's going to coordinate it? I'll call him. Okay. Howie? Yeah, just why I just want to say today I was uh, looking at the storm drains during the, during the rain and um, it appears that the Garden Street area is, is fixed. I don't know if it's permanent, but there was no flooding over there. We had a lot of rain today. Yeah, when I came back this afternoon, I was looking Ruggies around. Ruggies was okay. Yeah, Ruggies was uh, too. Chestnut Street down past my house was okay. The water was going through the culvert there. You know, what we need to keep in mind too is that the ground's not frozen. So, right. you know, that's definitely helping our situation here. You know? Uh, the ground was frozen. We would definitely wouldn't be getting absorption, and it could be a problem. We don't have a lot of snow left either, so yeah. that's helping. So we'll just have to monitor it. Yeah. You know? uh, speaking of speaking of Chestnut Street down by my house, is there any more movement? Have any more conversations with Paul on no, we what should we're going to plan to do that, there? Now that it's almost spring, we should call him. Again. Yeah, we ought to try and get something going yeah. okay. for. Uh, once the, the weather straightens out, you know, mm -hmm. we'll figure out what we're going to do there. Okay. All right. I'll call him too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, get get an idea from him on 
the size of the pipe he's suggesting to go onto the road. Now they're saying 30 inch. Is that going to work downstream? That's I mean, what they think. We're, because we're not putting it into smaller pipe, are we? Mm, that's that's, that's that'll my concern. Going, that'll be going to the open ditch. No, we're, we're talking Chestnut Street into where Gottschalk's property is. Is that all buried in the ground? Right. So that would all be 30 except for the viaducts, which... Well, the, the pipes under Gottschalk's property aren't 30 inch, are they? No. no. Nobody wants to replace all that. Oh, you're talking about replacing all of that? I thought we yeah. were just talking about Chestnut Street. Under both streets, because he looked at the, under Star, and he said there was like, like wood frame support underneath. It's just, you see, he recommended we just redo that also. Oh, okay. I didn't understand. I thought we were just talking about going underneath Chestnut Street. No. All right. Well, let's get a proposal together. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, and I guess the thing we have to be concerned here with is the bidding requirements. You know, if you, he can give us a rough cost estimate, you know, then we're going to have to determine whether we got to go out to bid on it. If we can get low enough to do an RFP instead of a public bidding. No. Yep. And we're still getting competitive pricing, so it's yeah. not like we're... So, yeah. let's, uh, you know, spring's right around the corner. We can get right. working on it. Yeah, he's, he's been working on it. He's going to go back and run transit line or something. Well, Lisa said something about somebody Trans called yesterday, right? He yes. was over there walking around in somebody's yard. Okay. <laughs> seen him a That's times. a good sign. Well, I, was there today. I was there today walking around. Dog came running out after me. She was concerned that we were going to do something and not let them know. Yeah, that's probably yeah. the same lady I talked to today. Yes. Diane? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Next item is planning and zoning. Everybody's got Bob's report. I just <coughs> got it, so I didn't really get a chance to read it. Followed up on? No? No. I am good. <coughs> uh, the only thing with zoning is the uh, fairgrounds and the events code. I know we're in yeah, we, uh, the budget right now. So. We should uh, probably look to set up some type of a workshop in April. After, yeah. Yeah. After the election. Yeah. April. April. Right. Yeah, we don't know if we're all going to be here after the election. Well, election election day is next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I meant after after, 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 oh, after, after, that after, new, after we have another uh, member here on the board. Yeah. <laughs> so. You want to pick a date now, or you think we'll be done with budgets by then? Yeah. Okay. We should be done with budget in a couple more weeks. We're waiting on you. I'm ready. I was ready. <laughs> I was ready last time, but then. <laughs> Brent kept talking. We got off track. We got we got off track last yeah, and last week, me. and that will not happen this Thursday. We got to go through. I'm those bringing lines. this hammer with me. <laughs> We're gonna okay. go through lines on Thursday night. Okay. All right. Our regular board meeting would be on the ninth. What about the sixteenth? Uh, 16th, no, I'm in a, in a night class. 18th? 18th, I'm in a night class. On the 23rd, I'm in a night class. Let's go for, how about the 24th of April, Wednesday night. Okay. okay. Sound good? Yes. Okay. Now we're going to... Tackle both events code and the fairgrounds zoning? Well, what we should be prepared to do is have information available for the public that they can peruse prior to the workshop. We have drafts for both. Right. Right. Yep. From, from have, the steering committee and from right. our committee. You have it available so the public can look at it. Right. And uh, uh, we could do a public workshop the first night with both items on the agenda. Mm hmm. 
all right, and then decide how we're going to progress from there. If we feel that it's too bulky to do both at the same time, we could split, try splitting them up. Okay. All right. And it's going to be six o'clock. No, seven, seven o'clock. Seven would be better, I think. Yeah. I was going to talk about it in our budget. budget? Yeah. Okay. We, well, just let, let me explain it. We, we got a we got an estimate for uh, overhead doors for the for the back part of the fire department back here. Now I put money away in this year's budget, this current budget, to get this done. But we only got one estimate, so I wanted to get at least one more. All right. Two. Well, the oh, money's I'll, I'll try the, to get two. The money's already in the budget. Then go ahead and get the estimates, and yeah. we can just make a decision. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Police and court. Any questions? Wayne? Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, bring you up to date a little bit of where we are at present and uh, tell you a little bit about where we're, we're going in the future. Um, the exterior of the building is pretty much done, as as you obviously are, are aware of. But um, the the south gable lane, in, in regard to the siding and trim, uh, is not finished yet, and that is as a result of material uh, scenario. Uh, we're waiting for some for some material to get to get here to uh, finish that, um, and that'll be done. Um, then the exterior of the building is totally done. Um, interior. Front the interior. Right? I'm sorry. Front porch detail. Yeah. Yeah. The front porch. Still waiting. Yeah. The, the columns um, are going to be here tomorrow, uh, so they'll be installed next week. Um, we had a little bit of a lead time there in regard because we changed from a raised panel to the to the uh, square columns. Um, interior uh, scenario is um, all the painting is done pretty much inside. Um, everything is primed. The ceilings are done. Most of the painting is done inside. Um, the cabinets uh, for the uh, training room were delivered today. The interior doors will be delivered tomorrow. Um, so um, everything else is, is well underway in regard to the interior scenario. The ceramic tile is going to be installed in the bathrooms um, beginning at the end of this week. Um, the VCT tile, which is the linoleum tile, which is throughout the interior of the building, is uh, scheduled for the beginning of next week. Um, and then it's interior <coughs> trim, and um, the electricians are presently working on the interior uh, fixtures. Um, the mechanical contractor is uh, involved right now with completing the ductwork in the basement. We had some scenarios there in regard to some of the plumbing fixtures had to be changed um, in order to accommodate the ductwork. Um, so that's going to be done like within the next couple of days. So um, at present, we're looking at a final inspection for the 23rd, 24th of April. Um, so everything is going well. Um, we've had a couple of issues in regard to the exterior sheathing, which um, I've been in, uh, had a lot of conversations with our engineer. There were some issues in regard to the application of the sheathing, and that is a scenario that I'm working very closely with our engineer and uh, the architect and uh, our general contractor. Um, and that's an issue that we're going to deal with uh, when we come with a final inspection. Um, and I'll give you some more information on that as we go forward. Um, uh, there is a change order, uh, one more change order. <laughs> Sorry to say that uh, we had to deal with within the last couple weeks, um, and that is the uh, we had an expansion tank that had to be added to the system. Um, 
as a result of the uh, prevention of a backflow scenario in our water system, we had to include a, an expansion tank that was not in the spec. That's going to cost us three hundred eleven dollars and twenty six cents. Um, I'm going to give you a copy of uh, change order. Thank you. That's not. That's not yours. Sorry. That's mine. <laughs> uh, this is a scenario that happened as a result of uh, when we we installed the uh, water system. Uh, we realized that we had a backflow uh, scenario that we had to uh, deal with. And as a result of that, an expansion tank was necessitated. It was not in the spec. Um, so as a result of that is a change order that we're going to be responsible for. So I'm going to have to ask the board to uh, approve this $311.26. I move that we approve the three hundred and eleven dollar and twenty six uh, second expense request from Ackerman to do the backflow. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So voted. Yeah. This is already installed, so I'm glad you approved it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> Get your money back. <laughs> um I actually, um, you know, I think this is the end of the change orders. I can't really envision another scenario that we're going to have in regard to change orders. <clears throat> I just will make mention that um, I reviewed the change orders um, that we've had to date, um, and they, they end up to be about $16,000, which, you know, sounds like a lot of money, but when you consider a $900,000 project, we're looking at about a little over 1% of a scenario in regard to change orders, which Quite frankly, the half of it was for the architect, right? I beg your pardon. Half of it was for the architect. Exactly. Yeah, I think we did a wonderful job. Um, no, the change, change orders have to do with the construction. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. This is these are scenarios that you don't envision as you go through the construction process. Um, you know the scenarios that. The you know the shoring was huge, and that was ten thousand dollars. So I mean that 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 was a scenario that obviously nobody anticipated. Um, we had a footprint that um, entailed approximately a 12-foot scenario on the south end of our building, and we had a soil a situation there that we had obviously no knowledge that we had a, uh, an unsecure situation there that we had to deal with. Um, and that was $10,000, which actually represents literally probably 75% of our change orders, and the rest of it was minimal. Um, so. I think we did a, a really, really great job in uh, curtailing uh, over expenditures in, re in regard to this project, and, uh, and I think that a lot of that has to do with communication between our architect and myself and, uh, and our engineer, who, you know, I think did a fabulous job in, in regard to curtailing those scenarios. So um, when you consider, you know, a little about a little over one percent of the total price of this thing, it's. Uh, I think we did a great job in that regard. So, um, you know, as we go forward, you know, we're, we're going to monitor the interior scenario. Um, uh, Pete Dunn is very involved with a lot of the scenarios that are going to go on with the finished product. Um, uh, so I think that's going to go real smooth. I don't really see any other scenarios here that uh, we're going to have to deal with. Um, I have met with the LP gas people. I just want to bring you up to date on that. Um, I had mentioned to you that we had made the decision to go with three 100-pound cylinders on the south side of the garage, and that was as a result of, again, uh, the, the small footprint that we're dealing with here. Um, if we go with 100-pound cylinders, we can put them next to the building, and again, they're on the south side of the structure. Um, if we go to anything larger than that, then we, then we have a uh, a, a space commitment that we have to go 25 feet from the building. We don't have the room to do that. Um, we are going to incorporate the emergency generator for the police building with the emergency generator for this building. So the LP gas requirements are going to be um, encompassed both with the new building and this building. So we're going to increase the capacity of our LP gas in regard to the emergency generators, and we've got that all worked out. Um, 
Um, I will say that one of the things that I think we missed in the budget scenario was the um, security and the phone scenario, um, which, you know, we can look back at this and say, but um, the security system and the phone system was uh, much a little more comprehensive than much more comprehensive because of code code requirements. I mean, it wasn't something that you know we're we're being over exorbitant about in, in installing. It was a scenario that state stipulates that we have to put this stuff in, and uh, as a result of that. Um, it costs us a little bit more money than we anticipated budget-wise. get the tower, too, and the tower is about $9,500, I think. Right. Um, however, I, I will say that, you know, the movement of the tower, and again, again, anticipating these scenarios, we were under the impression initially that we were going to just move the, the tower off of the existing trailer and put it on the new police station. Well, unfortunately, that isn't exactly the way it happened. However, we, we are going to be credited for the value of the tower that we have on the on the trailer, so it's not a total loss. Um, they are going to be able to give us a credit and utilize it in a, in, in a different scenario. But again, that was another scenario that uh, we kind of missed the boat on a little bit. So, Wayne, how much have we got left over? Um, I'm working on I'm working on the numbers now. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite there yet. I'm, I'm still trying to get some uh, feedback back about from my Comco, uh, and I want to sit down with the mayor and go over the numbers. Okay. Um, uh, but I, I, I can briefly tell you quickly. Well, that's okay. Do okay. <laughs> I, I'm really not there yet. Um, there's a lot of there's a couple things that I need to deal with in regard to um, the, the security system. Um, and then we have some additional scenarios in regard to Phil's, our, our architect. Um, we've gone over budget a little bit in that regard, and we're not really sure where we're going to be there. We have an anticipated amount, but quite frankly, I think that's been a little bit overestimated. So um, if, you, if you can give me a couple more days, um, I I'd like to sit down with the mayor and, and just go over those figures, and, and I'll have a, a real good uh, um, synopsis of where we are. Okay. Any yeah. questions from anybody? Everybody happy? It's looking good. I mean, I know Brant and I have had the opportunity to go through things. Is anybody on the board? Have, I went through there yesterday. Oh, good. Looks nice. Yeah. Last time I was in there, they had just about they were, were just finishing up all of the spackling. So I haven't been in since they put paint on. Right? Yeah, I just saw not paint, but I saw a, a prime that would do a lot of priming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tell you, the inside of this building is really nice, yeah. and I and I've heard nothing but great things about everybody's uh, feelings about the exterior. Oh, everybody loves the exterior. I mean, I, okay. you know, yeah. it's great. I'll be doing okay. a great job selecting colors, right? And I, you know, the wonderful thing is that <laughs> our, our most important neighbor, Joy, is like hugely. Uh, she feels so wonderful that this is happening and she she loves it so joy and i stand out on the street on sundays and go get it done yeah. get it done <laughs> right right yeah I, I really think this is going to be a a, a state-of-the-art facility um and it's uh it's come together well uh, uh it's been a, a huge experience for me uh working with all the people that to get it done and uh very very, very uh, proud of the whole scenario and you should be too just to uh, uh, kind of brief everybody on what I'm anticipating, once we know, okay, this is our, let's say, ex-inhabitant date, uh, you know, of course, we're going to have some type of a dedication ceremony. But then Pete is also planning on doing a, a day for law enforcement agencies uh, to come and see the station and, you mm -hmm. know, that type of thing. So as soon as we know more information about when those two functions will happen, I'll let all you guys know so that you can be here. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. Anybody else have anything, questions, anything on police and court? Dog report. This is the January dog report. No dogs picked up. A few complaints taken care of about barking dogs, and some were running at large. 
late in people's yards. These people have been warned and are now being monitored. No charges have been issued at this time. The winter is a time of complaint about dogs being left out too long in the cold so far, but we haven't had this on a large scale. Uh, committee reports, Street Commission, Howie. Oh, wait a minute, I got one more thing on the police and court, I forgot. Uh, annually, Dutchess County sends me from the Department of Emergency Response what's called a designation of emergency interim successors, meaning if something happens to me, what the chain of command is going to be from that point on. So I need three names to put on this form. So Howard Trout goes on as deputy mayor. And then who wants to be next? The youngest guy. <laughs> I'll go next. <laughs> what about the retired guy? <laughs> Bring up the rear. Lisa, you have all their addresses, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Howie Tree Commission. Okay, um, we had our Tree Commission meeting last Tuesday, and again, our tree planting, our spring tree planting is going to be Saturday, April 20th. Please write that down. We need some help. Um, we usually meet in the <coughs> park around 9 o'clock, but we'll have that um, information to you next month. So that's Saturday, April 20th. It only takes about three hours. We work from about 9 to 12. We plant about 20 to 24 trees. Um, this Saturday, which you won't see this until next, till it's over, but um, this Saturday is going to be a tree pruning workshop um, at 2 p.m. at the Mini Park. Tree Commission is going to sponsor that. And um, the, uh, as again, again, I said, you won't be able, to, you won't know about it until it's over. But anyway, we do, we do try to inform the public on how to take proper care of their trees. Uh, the Tree City Presentation Award is going to be March 28th in Albany. Um, that's an annual annual thing. We, we try to uh, maintain our Tree City status, and we've done it again this year. Uh, there was one pruning request at 17 Manor Road, but we got the request the day of the, um, the board, our, our Tree Commission meeting, so we really didn't take a look at that yet. So hopefully next month we'll have a pool. Have a decision on that. But okay. Ask the board to see what they want to do. Um, that's about it. Uh, is anybody planning on going to Albany for the? No, 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 nobody can make that unless you you want to go. No, I can't go. It's um, March 28th. I don't know what day that is. It's during the week, but nobody on the tree commission could go. It's on a Thursday. Thursday. Get a free lunch. Wayne, would you like to go? You don't want to visit. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. Okay. <laughs> no, if anybody on the board wants to go, they they can go. All right. Free Website. Money. Anybody got anything? <clears throat> Finance and controls. Nothing. No. Nope. Other business. Uh, we have received a letter from Adeline Malone's law firm. She is representing some folks that are apparently uh, purchasing a piece of property at 6463 Montgomery Street. We got, you know, past rubies. And she represents a pers prospective purchaser of the above captured property. And we have a, uh, uh, an easement through that property. And apparently there's two easements. There's a permanent and a temporary, correct? correct. <clears throat> and they're looking to get the temporary easement abandoned. They're requesting that because they believe it was only there for the installation. However, when I read it, it says including here with the right to use a five-foot wide temporary working easement on the easterly side of the, of the above-ground permanent easement. Mm -hmm. um, 
that would be up to the sewer department, but the way I read that, it wasn't just for the installation. If you have to go in and do any repairs, maintenance, whatever, you still have the ability to have that, utilize that easement area. So basically what it does, it gives us an extra five feet? Gives you an extra five feet to work in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I, I actually, I talked with the woman from Adeline's law office, and I said, you know, the, the, the maps don't show any of this. No. All, it sh all it shows is that there's a, uh, uh, it's, it's listed on here as an agreement. It, it was in the original right. deed. There's a, a, uh, an easement that was granted, and the working easement is just an additional five feet beyond the described permanent easement. And then here it shows uh, 0.046 acres easement right of way, which is the permanent easement. What is it for? It's where this, the wastewater, wastewater main water. goes through the back of those properties, you know, up Route 9. Mm -hmm. So there's five feet on one there's side or both sides? One side. It's on the easterly side of the reference permanent easement. There's a permanent easement, then there's another five feet. Right, so they can work on it in case something happens. So the question is, is uh, they're asking us to <coughs> abandon the, the temporary what? easement. And I don't know what anybody else's feeling is, but I think we should say no to it. And it, it you know, as a practical matter, we're never going to use it. I mean, what, what's well, the, if we had to go in there and dig it up. Right. You and know? Chances are we won't, but what is she, what, she, they're just going to like make a lawn out of it, which is fine. They can just do that. We're not. Well, it's probably already lawn now. Right. You know? Maybe they want to plant I mean, they use trees. this usually for the specific purpose that they need it for, which is very limited. We're not going to. You no, know, it's up to the board. We're not going to put a shed on it or anything. I won't do anything with it. No? No, I'd leave yeah. it. Okay. I'll, I'll advise her. Sure. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on to correspondence. There's no well, other business, right? I had a few right? things for you. You got other business? Okay. The, sprint, the Sprint Amendment. Uh, we need to get this approved. Rich has looked it over. I looked it over. It looks good. We're going to get an extra $212.56 a month. Did you not see this? Did anyone? I didn't see it. So we can approve this in the next couple of days if I get a cop shoot yeah. a copy of this to you guys? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was four hundred dollars or was it gonna be four hundred total? Four twenty five and we split it with Crown Castle. Okay. Because they're the, they operate the tower. So the the total is four hundred and twenty five, we get half of that. Right. Okay. And then I've got some correspondence from AT T Wireless. Now they're looking to expand their lease space, so stay tuned on that. We'll <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and reach high, Brett. Reach high. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the hospital discussion. What, what are we? Gonna, <clears throat> what's our next step with the hospital? Or well, we as a, we as a board have to decide how we want to proceed on it. Uh, you know, and the town has to decide how they want to proceed on it, and the uh, school, and then we're going to get back together. Did you want to have a, a common meeting with, with the school board and the town? And, and well, we're going to have another meeting, meeting with them, with but them. we all, as individual Which entities, is. need to decide yeah. how we feel we should proceed. Okay. And then we're going to all get back together again. Okay. Yeah. Can we put this on the agenda for Thursday? And What's Thursday's budget? Thursday's budget. budget yeah. We could probably do it tomorrow, because I don't think tomorrow's meeting is going to take a long time, but maybe a half hour, maybe a little bit longer. I have a meeting at uh, eight, like eight, eight fifteen. So yeah, I have to be see. done with whatever our business is by then because I have to meet with the chief. So yeah, well, we, we're going to be six o'clock. So right? either tomorrow or Thursday. Okay, and then I'll get the sprint deal yeah. to you guys, and then we'll talk about the hospital too. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. All right. No other business. Well. We Brent was questioning me about this road we're going to dedicate, but we said we're going to do that after the winter was over, right? Right. It's going to be May 1st. Nancy okay. was going to con yeah, uh, forgot about David that. Silver was in agreement. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we had already approved that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there were conditions. They had to create right, storm right, drains right. and yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd like to go to an executive session tomorrow night, too. Uh, Thursday night. Thursday, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, as far as the Panda representative, uh, David Miller had expressed an interest. He had sent a letter. I had also received a phone call from a gentleman that lives over on South Street, and I called him, I think or I was in the office over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, and I called and left a message for him to uh, submit a letter of interest and a resume. So, uh, uh, you know, at this time I'm going to say let's wait a little bit until we uh, see if that other letter of interest comes in. But David has uh, submitted a letter. All right, other correspondence. Uh, last year we had done this, and uh, this they're asking us again. This is Alice Plotnick and Deirdre Fisher. They are uh, co-founders of uh, a group, and it's a Parkinson's Awareness Month proclamation. Dear Mayor Reardon, we are writing on behalf of the Parkinson Support Group in Rhinebeck, of which we are co-founders. We respectfully request that you join the U.S. Senate that each year declares April as Worldwide Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month. We have attached a proclamation template, which you can fill in or copy onto your own document and sign. So I would uh, make a motion to approve that we pass this resolution. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, I lost my father to Parkinson, so I definitely support it. Okay. Any other comments? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. We'll test to that, Howie. Okay. Okay, Jim. Put your address so they can send you the bill. <laughs> uh, what is it, 76 East Market Street? <laughs> Somebody else oh. behind you sign it there, too. I think they're looking for two. And here's the return Speaking envelope. Of bills. Yeah, I was going to give that to Lisa. Well, I guess we can talk about Okay, this. moving on with more correspondence. Apparently we are, how you must know about this, is something that was sent to the Tree Commission. Right, we have to. Um, for uh, the New York State Urban Forestry Council. Right. $100 dues. Mm-hmm. Can we make a motion? Well, I'll make a motion that we renew our membership for the Urban uh, Forestry Council in New York State for $100. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? How are you going to pay for that? I'm going to give it to Lisa. It's in our budget line. <laughs> Consulting. And then there is the letter from DEC congratulating us on being recognized as Tree City USA and informing us about the ceremony in Albany. And that's it for correspondence. Lisa, you got anything else? No, that's it. No? Okay. We got it all. All right. So then we're going to move on to minutes approval. And we have January 8th minutes. Any additions, omissions, or corrections? Motion to approve. I move Aye. that we approve them as submitted. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. February 12th. Additions, omissions, or corrections? Did you make the motion? Motion to approve. Second. Aye. Make a motion we approve and submitted. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. February 13th. Additions, omissions, corrections. Uh, had we gone over that one yet, Lisa? Uh, no, I don't think you and I had talked about that one. I think that one you sent me later. Um, I Couple. sent couple questions I had under other business as far as the panda representative for the village it said we will post on the website did we ever do that I believe we did yeah we'll have to check that yeah all, this. all right and then in the next line next paragraph down it says young Americans and I believe I should say young Rhinebeck it should and that you it guys approved Rhinebeck, that Rhinebeck. last month when I wasn't here that was them coming up here and using this building mm -hmm. okay right uh, okay, young Rhinebeck. Okay, and then we have, uh, I can give you this if you want. I can give you this with the okay. corrections on it. 
Uh, it says Rhinebeck Commons Road Dedication. The board will accept a dedication at the meeting in March to be in effect April. First. Well, here I think it says April 12th. But at any rate, it's May 1st. That's what May we changed 1st, okay. it to. All right. And there was a couple of uh, spelling things, typos. Okay. Uh, and then there was something, an uh, event steering committee report. Mayor Reardon will speak to Andrew Imperati because they are seeking grant money. I have no idea what that means. But well, it was uh, because of the, uh, for their schedule, because it depends on how much and how quickly they want to get it done because they're trying to, they're trying to get grant money for the uh, village, for the uh, oh, museum oh, village. For, the, for moving the. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with the event steering committee report, though. Okay. All right. No, just that. That just clarifies it. All right. All right. And yeah, a couple other minor changes. I'll go over with you, Lisa. Okay. All right. And then there's a February. That one we got to approve. February 13th. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. So voted. Uh, February 25th. Motion to approve. So moved. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And March 4th. Uh, second page, it says, Trustee Sauer informed the board that we will require grant funding in order to complete the projects. But that was under, we were talking about street department budget. Yeah. Yes. And we don't. We weren't talking about any grant funding for the street department. We were talking about spending chips money. Chips money, right? So we can just strike that. But you also talked about rather than using all the chips money to go for grant as well. Right, for the but street the department. Yeah, but the project we were talking about was okay. for chips. chips money. Okay. Yep. It's that whole comprehensive okay. plan thing we're talking about that we'll have to get grant funds for. I'll go over those with you. Okay. All right, that's all I have for minutes. Uh, we need a motion to approve that one. That's the March 4th one. So, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. So when did you do all this work? That's a hell of a lot of work you did there. Sunday. Sunday. That's a lot of work. See how we spend our off days? Yeah. <laughs> like, like the mayor. So oh, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a day off, I just come to the village hall and work. Uh, okay, water and sewer adjustments. Uh, I have uh, four of them, um, actually two. One of them, uh, we had a, uh, a bus pipe in a uh, unoccupied dwelling, and uh, so we sent a bill for $140.40, and that was on Star Drive. Um, we have three items uh, where uh, actually these are uh, clerk errors where they didn't reset the uh, uh, the account after, or they reset the account to zero after they added just a radio head, so that was not necessary, and uh, so that is a $33, an $83 adjustment, $36 adjustment, and $96 adjustment. So make a motion. Make a motion to uh, approve the uh, uh, adjustments. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Any other business? Vouchers are downstairs to be signed, right, Lisa? Yes, they are. Okay. I need a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you, everybody. Budget, right?